Okay. All right, so thanks for joining today um, for the intercession for students on the Summer Nonprofit Immersion Program. So we're gonna go through a couple, this is kind of our agenda for today. So it's based off of the, I think the most frequently asked questions to kind of talk through different components of the program. So we'll talk about what is the Summer Nonprofit Immersion Program? What is an AmeriCorps Summer Associate? What are some logistics to think about for the summer? Uh, what are the expectations for participants and what kinds of activities you might be able to expect to do, which will include some information about sites that we have worked with in the past and expect to work with this summer, and then what kind of benefits you can expect to receive. And then we'll end with kind of next steps um, and what you need to do if you're interested in the program. So I should have said as well that my name is Shelly Sizemore. I serve as the Director of Community Partnerships in the Office of Civic and Community Engagement. Um, and one of my primary, my big responsibilities over the summer is to direct the Summer Nonprofit Immersion Program. I think this will be my fifth year um, directing the program. So um, SNP is an opportunity that's hosted by the Office of Civic and Community Engagement for Wake Forest students to serve local community partners full-time in the summer. Um, it's in its 15th year overall, um, and it includes a, both kind of an internship piece where you are at your site for the majority of your time, as well as like a curricular component where we offer professional and personal development opportunities throughout the summer. So some examples of what those might look like, um, we have regular seminars where we're kind of reading um, small pieces on nonprofit work, on community engagement work. Um, SNP participants are invited to lead those discussions as well as we kind of take a more critical look at just community-based work and how nonprofits fit into that. Um, we also do some professional development. So we have a webinar that's um, that's focused on, last year it was a webinar, but hopefully this summer it'll be in person, that's focused on communication skills. So writing for nonprofit, creating like high impact communication materials for an organization. We do a workshop on grant writing and um, kind of really try to help you develop the types of skill sets that not only would be beneficial to a career in nonprofit work, but also could be transferable to other, other careers. Um, one of the, the, I think, best things about SNP is that it is project-based. So as opposed to other internships where you might be just kind of responding to whatever your employer or your host wants you to do in that day, uh, students who are part of our program have a pretty good sense at the beginning of the summer around what their key deliverables are going to be and what their key projects are going to be. And that has really transferred well for students into kind of other employment opportunities after graduation, being able to really talk about what you did. Um, all of our partner sites that apply and are selected have to identify metrics um, that they would like for their um, intern to hit in the summer. And we ask them to do that also so that those things can go into your resume, into conversations you have with future employers. Um, every summer we are able to work with the OPCD um, and they come in at least once, sometimes multiple times and work with students on how to talk about their, um, their internship and what they've accomplished on their resume and, and to future employers. So we take it really seriously to kind of link the two pieces, um, especially because Wake doesn't have a nonprofit management program, as you all know. So we're kind of trying to, to support students who wanna go into the field uh, and, and students who wanna go into adjacent fields, right? Like social work, policy, things like that. Um, so typically SNP is a great space for students to also connect with each other. Um, because it ends up being a lot of students interested in nonprofit, community engaged, or public sector work, maybe interested in government work long term, um, or other kind of community based work. And you're explore, we explore a lot around just what that looks like, right? So the balance between public sector, government work versus policy work versus a nonprofit. Um, organization that maybe directly serves clients, right? And we asked our site supervisors to make sure that students have an opportunity to balance their daily work with 
um, like attending board meetings um, or talking to funders, just so you get more of a holistic sense of what it's like to work with the organization and to work in a nonprofit. So SNP has existed, as I mentioned, for 15 years. Um, another big part of our office is that we host the largest AmeriCorps VISTA project in the state. Um, AmeriCorps VISTA is a national service program. Um, so I did AmeriCorps VISTA for a full year after college. Um, it's kind of a gap year program, but it also can be a good entry point into community-based work. Um, because we serve, we, we host full year VISTAs, um, we are able to apply to also host summer associates. And so we, two years ago, were able to scale out the number of summer associates that we host in the summer so that all of our SNP students were part of our AmeriCorps Summer Associates program. The reason that that matters <laughs> is for a couple of reasons. So first, um, it matters because you receive a higher living stipend than we could afford to pay you um, if we were just paying you cash, right? So summer associates receive a living stipend uh, from the government and it is around a little over $500 every two weeks. So this is a paid opportunity, um, which you may know, have realized already is relatively uncommon in nonprofit internships. Um, so you receive that every two weeks. The second big benefit is that all AmeriCorps members receive an are eligible to say they want to receive an education award at the end of their service. So the reason we say eligible is because you can choose either the education award or a cash stipend. The large majority of people choose education award because it's so much more money. So for full year VISTAs at the end of their year of service, they receive close to $7,000. And that can be applied to current debt, future schooling, um, or current schooling. It's prorated for AmeriCorps Summer Associates, and so it ends up being around $1,200. Um, and so that's something that you receive in addition to your living stipend, um, and it's good for five years. So you don't have to use it now. You can save it. Um, I always share with students that a lot of, there are increasingly more graduate programs that are matching that education award. And so if you think you're gonna to go to grad school and you don't have to use it now to pay for school, it might be a good idea to save it um, to see if you can get it matched at a grad school program. Um, so the key things that summer associates do are that they serve for intensive short term. So that means eight to 10 weeks um, under AmeriCorps. You can provide direct service, which is really great for, um, for our organizations, but also for you to just get experience in the summer. So you will be doing both the kind of capacity building work that is usually associated with summer associates, and you'll be helping to really staff the programs that you're a part of um, so that you can really build their capacity in the summer. Um, and then the key piece, because they're associated with, um, with VISTA, so VISTA members in general, uh, VISTA was established by uh, Lyndon Johnson as part of the War on Poverty, even before AmeriCorps, as an anti-poverty program. Um, basically, the thinking was that it was kind of like domestic Peace Corps, but just for a year. Um, so this, all VISTA provide services that improve the lives of low-income individuals, families, or communities. So we can interpret kind of improving the lives in different ways, but that's something that holds everyone together. So logistics, um, you will serve between 35 and 40 hours a week. Um, the work hours can differ by site. That's something that we help you to negotiate with your site. So for instance, some of our sites in the past only work a four day work week in the summer, right? Um, and they, kind of agree that like, if you are willing to work extra four days a week, then you get a Monday, you get Mondays off. Um, we don't really get in the weeds on that unless the student asks us to help them navigate that conversation. Um, but we wanna make sure we do kind of hold, we do hold fast to that 35 to 40 hours. We do make sure that you're not kind of getting taken advantage of, um, but, if you have work for an organ or working at an organization that, for instance, has programming on Sunday afternoon, you may work less during the week. 
um, because really what matters the most is kind of those, that range of hours. Um, it includes anything you're doing at or with your site. So that can include, it will include both what you're doing on site, but also our professional developments, our seminars are included in all of that. So it's not like you're doing 40 hours a week and then participating in all this other stuff. Um, similarly, if you are doing work remotely or if you're trying to finish up a graphic after hours, that counts to your hours as well. So um, we're very, we're very insistent on respecting uh, boundaries around time, uh, particularly because, you know, even though it is an incentivized internship, we want to make sure that students are comfortable with the amount that they're working over the summer. Um, there, we will host more than likely a virtual orientation at the end of May, and then um, you will begin in-person service on June 1st. And I'll talk a little bit about like in-person, virtual, like all of that. As you all know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So part of what we're kind of forecasting now is like what we think is going to be the way it will work, uh, assuming that nothing, nothing major shifts. Um, so summer associates receive um, time off for federal holidays that their sites recognize. And so Wake Forest recognizes Memorial Day, Juneteenth, and July 4th um, in the summer. So all of our summer associates are off those days. And then you have two floaters that you can use throughout um, the summer. Again, a lot of times those days aren't super necessary because there is the potential to do some work virtually or while traveling as long as you're in communication with your organization. So right now we're saying that summer associates will serve in person. Um, that has overwhelmingly been what our sites have asked for and what students have asked for. Um, last summer, we had a hybrid model where some people served in person and some people did not. Um, and it was not ideal as you all have probably experienced in other types of hybrid spaces. Um, but we want folks to know that some virtual work is okay. So I think one of the things we've learned in the pandemic is that people can be really, really productive virtually, right? And like not physically sitting in the office. And because we work with so many different sites, um, we really leave that up to the site and the, the summer intern to work through around what makes sense for the work, right? If you're designing flyers, it's probably okay for you to be at home that day while you're designing flyers. Um, but if your organization has an opportunity to work in person with individuals that they are serving, we want you to be able to be there for that as well, because there's important learning that happens in both spaces. Um, and of course, we're gonna ask uh, our sites and individuals to follow kind of CDC public health guidance and communicate with us if you feel like you're, you've been, if you have possibly been exposed. And that's really so we can just check on you and make sure you're doing all right. Um, so in the past, we before COVID, we required um, shared housing as a part of the program. Um, we are no longer requiring that. Um, we also have been able to increase this, the stipend significantly um, from the past. And so students, what we're doing now is students who need housing to participate in the program can apply for assistance through the OCCE. But if you already have housing, if you're financially able to pay for your own housing, um, it's no longer required kind of tethered to the project. And that was also based off of kind of student feedback. Um, so as a participant, your expectations are the following. In addition to you know, serving at your site, um, you will meet at least once weekly with site supervisor, your site supervisor at your organization. Um, you are expected to attend all of our seminars and gatherings unless you communicate, um, you know, with reasonable notice that you can't participate. Um, because it is part of a federal program, uh, we have to verify that you are working. Um, so we will do a training on how to use uh, Give Pulse, which is our new university volunteer management uh, dashboard, but you will submit weekly timesheets through that dashboard just to verify your hours. And then you'll submit a midterm. We do like a check-in halfway through the summer just to say, how are things going? What challenges do you have? Um, some students are really vocal about the challenges they have. 
and about the support they need. And some students aren't comfortable with that. And so we do this check-in every summer in the middle so that everybody kind of has a bit of a nudge to really think about, is this going well? And what support might I need for the rest of the summer for it to go better? Um, and then at the end, you and your partner site submit a final report together that just summarizes the work that you've done, what you've learned, what they've learned from you, you know, those types of things. Um, so another expectation is that you communicate with us in a timely manner if you have issues. Um, this is can be a really good um, internship experience for students, particularly if you haven't had an internship experience before, because you do have our office to support you in navigating conversations with your supervisor, with coworkers. If you have a personal crisis, we're here to support you, but we can only do that if you are gonna, if you communicate, right? This is not one of those programs where we're trying to take up a ton of your time by asking you to like submit reports and reflections and provide feedback, right? Um, but it, that does mean that you need to reach out if you're having issues. Um, participants need to respond to emails in a timely manner. Um, that can sometimes be challenging over the summer, but if we don't hear back from you, we start to get worried that something's wrong with you. <laughs> um, and so just want to name up front that responding is really important to, um, to the pay participant expectations. And then because this is um, part of the AmeriCorps process, there's kind of two application periods. So right now, um, so AmeriCorps, the application for AmeriCorps, like through the portal, will not open up for about another month. Obviously, that would be way too late for us to start recruiting students for this and for students to be able to plan on it. And so you will apply through the form that hopefully you already have. Um, I can stick in the chat um, when we're doing Q&A. Um, and then we will interview you and match you and all of that. And then after you've been accepted, you'll get some pretty, you'll get clear guidance on how you need to go through the AmeriCorps onboarding process. Um, so just want to give people a heads up is like not, it's kind of not enjoyable <laughs> um, as a, uh, like as a process because it's not a great technology system, um, but we're here to support you as you go through that as well. We just want people to know that it's needed. So um, I already talked a lot about this reporting. Uh, we do in a couple different ways with summer associates. So we ask you to do your, you have to do your weekly timesheets. We do a midterm report and a final report. But we also like really appreciate students sharing successes, opportunities throughout the summer. We profile each of our summer interns and their partner site and the work they're doing on our social media at some point during the summer. Um, so we ask you to follow us just so that we can tag you. But many of the sites as well that we work with have pretty major fundraisers or events during the summer. And so we just wanna make sure that students and partner sites are aware that a part of the reporting responsibilities if you're part of the program is to share with us those opportunities so we can amplify them. So what can you expect to do? Um, so summer associates do activities that increase their organization's ability to serve the community. So that also is something that AmeriCorps requires. They call it capacity building. Um, when you're increasing an organization's kind of capacity, it's um, their reach, their, the strength of their programs, their effectiveness, their efficiency. But that also works really well for, for student interns because it gives you an opportunity to really look at the operations of an organization almost as an outsider. And, and to kind of speak into what might make it more effective. Um, it should, they should be, as I mentioned before, a, a mixture of direct service. So some working with individuals served um, as well as some kind of capacity building projects. So for instance, one of the sites we've worked with in the past is the Shalom Project. The Shalom Project manages a year round medical clinic, uh, food pantry, closing closet and an anti poverty program for women heads of household. So their summer associate might do a mix of things, right? They might create um, some social media posts about how um, people can sign up to be part of Flourish, the, the anti-poverty program. Uh, they might develop a volunteer recruitment strategy for how to recruit physicians uh, for the medical clinic. 
they might actually manage those volunteers, right? Be the point of contact for those volunteers over the summer. Um, they also might, you know, create some graphics or think about ways to do community outreach to populations that can be served by the programs and to think creatively about that. Uh, summer associates in the past have written grants and received grant funding for their organizations. Um, they've done research. Um, so we had a summer associate serving last summer that was working with a funder and actually did a lot of research on Medicare expansion um, and the impact that was going to have on North Carolina and created some proposals for her organization on how they could better connect resources through that with low income populations that they served. Um, they might do program planning. So some of our summer associates work uh, with programs that um, work with young people. In the past, we've had a, a summer associate that has served with Authoring Action, which uh, does spoken word um, and runs a summer intensive. Um, and that summer associate was a key program staff member. So it was not only you know, supporting the organization in other ways, but was there every Every day, you know, building relationships with the students, helping to get things set up, making sure that, you know, all of the lunches were ordered and the materials were ready and that sort of thing. So activities can run a gamut. Similarly, the types of work can really run, run a gamut. So right now, what we are waiting Right now, our application for sites is open through Friday. Um, it was actually supposed to close on Monday, but we extended it because of the fire last week. It just felt like give some give folks a few more days, um, especially because several of the organizations were responding to the fire um, and to, to residents, right? Um, but I thought I'd give you a sense of some of the organizations we've partnered with in the past. So we've partnered with the Share Co-op, which is a food cooperative. Um, that's located on Peters Creek Parkway. Um, we have worked with Dress for Success, which is a program that seeks to connect low-income women with um, clothing that can help them interview for jobs um, and other sorts of professional and personal development. Um, we've fairly consistently partnered with the Winston-Salem Urban League. Um, the summer associate has has been key in staffing their summer youth employment program, which connects low to moderate, it's funded by the city of Winston-Salem, and it matches low to moderate income high schoolers with companies, nonprofits, and other employers in the, in the city for their first jobs. And so the summer associate has done everything from reviewing applications to matching those students with their employment opportunities to building out curriculum to to help develop their professional skill set throughout the summer. Um, Winston-Salem Mixer is a makerspace um, that's located on MLK um, close to Wake Downtown. Um, and their summer associate has worked to help connect their work um, with more makers, right? And makers who maybe are low income or are needing to, to turn their, um, make whatever they make i'm not sure what the word is for that is i know it's not just crafts but like you know their item that they work they make into something that's revenue generating i've talked about shalom project you're probably familiar with campus kitchen our summer associates um, have run the campus kitchen um, in the summer months um, and the north carolina diaper bank is another example of an organization that we've worked with in the past um, and they provide diapers to um, low-income families in the triad um, and that volunteer has done everything or that summer associate has done everything from recruiting volunteers to identifying um, donors to doing just general outreach to partner sites and we can talk more specifically about different organizations if you have a personal kind of issue area you're interested in or organization you're interested in working with so next steps for the program are that you submit your application by March 7th. Um, right now we are tentatively planning a partner networking event for the evening of Tuesday, like the afternoon evening of Tuesday, March 1st on campus. Uh, we were able to do this before uh, the pandemic and it was a really good opportunity for students who were interested in the program to meet partners that we had already selected. So we will have our partners selected as sites then. And it's really kind of like, it's, it's kind of like a speed networking event. 
Um, each partner has like a little sign that says who they are and you have the opportunity to go up and talk to them about what, what the intern might be doing, who, what they're like, the supervisor's there. And it allows you to then when you interview with us um, to share with us which organizations you're really excited about um, and which organizations maybe you're not as excited about. So the way that we do selections is through a matching process. So when you apply, we also um, try to have interviews or short interviews um, with students um, where we ask you to think through just like why you wanna do the program and where specifically you wanna serve. We also give our sites have to submit kind of the things, the skill sets that they most need um, and what they, are looking for out of a summer associate, and then we look for a match. So that is the end of the presentation. I'm going to stop recording now and take Q&A from folks who've been able to join. Mm -hmm.